We're going to get started right now with news you can use. Uh, first thing we want to talk about today, and this is going to be a, the first of a three-parter, is the fact that the Fed raised interest rates yesterday. Uh, they raised it 0.75, 75 basis points, three quarters of a full point, um, and that was the expected amount. Uh, remember, the Fed has unilateral ability to raise the Fed funds rate at their discretion. Their main job as the Federal Reserve is to maintain a proper money supply balance so as to keep inflation down. So far this year, we're going to give them an F. They have not done a good job. They're trying, but they were a little late to the party. And in my opinion, they're doing now too much too too late. So instead of too much too soon or not enough, uh, they're, they're now adding, I think, fuel to the fire. Uh, and here's the reason. At the beginning of the year, our Fed funds rate was 0.25%, one quarter of one point. It's 2.5% now. That's 10, one zero, 10 times the Federal uh, Reserve's Fed funds rate that we had at the beginning of the year, but yet inflation is higher now than it was at the beginning. The idea is as you raise interest rates across the board as the central bank, which is the Fed is the central bank of the U.S., as interest rates are raised, the inflationary pressure should come down. It's actually gone the other way. They've gone up faster than the Fed funds indexed. Um, the, the, one of the, my biggest points that I want to talk to you about today is typically in our business, in the housing industry, everybody worries about the Fed funds rate. The Fed's raising interest rate. That means mortgages are going to go up. There is no direct correlation between the Fed funds rate and the mortgage rate. Typically, the mortgages in this country are based on a number of other factors. We're going to talk about that in one of the, this is going to be a three-part news you can use because we're going to really dig deep into this thing. But uh, typically, there is no correlation between the Fed funds rate and the mortgages because mortgages are based, mortgages primarily are from six to 10 years. That's the average life of a mortgage in the U.S. The Fed funds rate is an overnight rate. So let's talk right now about what the Fed is and kind of how this all works. Uh, the Fed is the Federal Reserve. They are the entity that is charged with maintaining, as I said, the money supply, uh, debits and credits and that kind of thing within the entire country and in the world uh, to primarily, their main mission is to keep inflation down. They, they do that through a series of different processes, but the, the main way that they do it is using what's called the Fed funds rate. The Fed funds rate is that rate that went up 75 basis points yesterday, 0.75 of a percent. And what that rate is, now it's two and a half percent, it was 0.25, one quarter of one percent at the beginning of the year. Uh, what that rate is, is that is the rate that banks can charge each other for the overnight use of funds. So let's say one day Bank of America at five o'clock, they're like, oh crap, we're short $40 billion in our vault. We need that to cover our clearings tonight. They contact whatever, Chase Manhattan. Chase is like, yeah, we got 40 billion extra sitting in our vault. We'll send it to you. You pay us two and a half percent interest rate overnight. That's a per annum rate. So it's, it's a minuscule on a daily basis. That's the Fed funds rate. Interest rates for mortgages are currently around 6%. Um, but those are based on the fact that mortgages are much longer than overnight interest, uh, interest device. In other words, they are in the business of loaning out money for primarily six to 10 years. And they have all of these guys that do this handicapping and abstracting and analysis, and they can project the average length of their loan. And so they go out, if you want to go get a loan for a house, they go out and find that money for that same amount of time and they match those up. Where do you get that? Well, you get that also from the Fed uh, in what's called their, T or from the federal government, I'm sorry, uh, from the Treasury Department specifically in the T-bills, T-bonds, and those types of things. So they buy a 10-year mortgage and that matches up primarily with a um, or a 10 year bond, and that matches up primarily with a, a mortgage that will expire in about 10 years. Even though it's a 30 year mortgage, most of these things get paid off very, very quickly. So those rates are significantly higher. Those T bonds, T bills, those types of things, the government's money that they use to float themselves, what the government does is they print IOUs in the form of what's called bills and bonds. And then primarily the Chinese, the Russians, the Indians, other countries, other sovereign countries who want to downsize their risk of their currency will come in and buy the U.S. government's T-bills, T-bonds, that type of thing. That money 
uh, comes back into the U.S. government, and then we spend it on all these things that we are so fortunate to be blessed with and a few things that we probably shouldn't be spending money on. Nonetheless, that's a different news you can use. Um, and that money is what is used to run the government. Well, that is the basis upon which that they build a housing loan or mortgage loan. Primarily, though, uh, this is the cost, the Fed fund rate is the cost that the banks are borrowing at, essentially from the Fed. And so if they're charging 6% on mortgage, they're paying 2.5% to the government. Now, why yesterday then, when we went up three quarters of a point, 75 basis points, as the Fed's fund rate, why did mortgages drop this morning? Well, it's and here's what happens. The Fed is uh, a semi-opaque business. In other words, um, they give clues ahead of time. There are eight districts within the Fed. Uh, seven of the eight governors, they're called governors of the local branches. There's one in Kansas City. There's one in San Francisco. There's one in, I don't know, Dallas. Um, they're around the country. Uh, seven of those eight indicated that 75 basis points was all they were prepared to do. There was some talk that maybe they'd go up a full point, 100 basis points, uh, but the market had already baked in for the mortgages, they'd already baked in the 75 basis points. So that when we got up to 6%, they were already anticipating that this 75 basis points was going to come to fruition. What happened, though, is when that actually comes to fruition, then these guys who have all bet it's going to only be 75 basis points are like, phew, okay, we made that one. Now we can drop those interest rates back down. Remember, they're making a huge spread between 25 and 6%. That's a lot bigger than they would normally make. So their dropping rates, rates are on mortgages are dropping today, but they're getting ready to price in over the next couple of weeks uh, a big bump for the next meeting. And there's all kinds of bets, whether it's going to be half a point, 75 basis point. It all depends on how they read the tea leaves, how the economy goes with regard to inflation, that kind of thing. So it is unknown at this point what's going to happen in the future. However, today in the mortgage business, if you have, let's say, as a seller of a home, uh, if you want a buyer at a certain price and you don't want to drop your price, the... A year ago, that, that same house would have sold because 3% money, 2.5% money, anybody could afford just about anything. Today, 6% they can't. But what you can do, and we talked about this in the previous episode, is you can buy down that mortgage for your buyer. So as a seller, you can go out and say, you know what? I will buy down your mortgage from 6% to 4 Will that work? Yeah, that, almost for everybody, is 4% is still a doable number. Um, and it was it used to be very expensive to do that. So you would pay a point to get a quarter point reduction. So if you got to go from six to four, that's eight quarter point reductions, two full points, eight quarter point reductions. That would be an eight point kicker seller would have to put into the deal. As of this morning, that number is down to a half a percent. So today, if you want to buy down a mortgage to darn near zero, it's only costing you two points for every one point reduction in your mortgage interest rate. This is a short time deal. This is money on sale right now. So those of you who wanna sell, if you wanna sell your house immediately, all you gotta do is advertise that I'm offering three or 4% interest for the next buyer uh, and only for the next 10 days. And you will get a buyer just like that because nobody's focusing on this. We used to do this back in the day when I started, uh, when we were dealing with eight and 10% mortgages, we used to have to buy those things down all the time. You hear of buyers buying down their own mortgage. You know, I'll kick in two points and I'll buy down my mortgage slightly lower amount. But they've allowed, they've always allowed sellers to contribute to that too. Uh, there have been some limitations like a three point or 3% uh, type deal. But even with that, at 3% today, that is um, six half point reductions or a basically uh, point and a half off of your mortgage amount. So without interfering with anything, without having to juggle numbers, you can buy down your buyer's points, or buy down your buyer's mortgage rate, and it's gonna put anybody in the capability of paying more for a house because their payments will be lower. FHA can't do jack about this because there are comps at the higher price that were still within six months ago in terms of sales, and they hate this. This is driving them crazy. Um, 
expect them to make unilateral moves to try and ban this. But for right now, for the next two weeks, if you got something for sale, jack the price up, drop the mortgage, and you'll sell it just like that. All right, let's go back to the Fed funds. Um, the Fed fund, we're gonna talk about this more next time. Uh, they do something called quantitative easing. Okay, quantitative easing is the politically correct way of what used to be called when I was growing up, printing money. I remember my grandfather, my dad, mom, always talking about, oh, the government, they need something, they just print money, right? So that was really what, you know, they called it. It is literally called quantitative easing today. And we'll go through this in more detail on Tuesday's call. We're going to dig deep into this thing and show you how the money supply works and how it all feeds up into Fed funds rate and how that all diffuses into things like mortgage, what you pay for your credit card, um, you know, car loans, all that kind of stuff. And it, and it all has an effect. But this thing is, in my opinion, this is such an incestuous business that you're gonna be shocked unless you already have some familiarity with this. This is basically the government in one hand printing money, selling it to another division of the government who then takes the money and gives it to the banks to loan back out, who then the government will buy that mortgage from that other entity, selling it off. It is a giant circle thing. And all they're doing is printing money, print money, print money, print money. There's no nothing created in this deal. This is all it, smoke and mirrors. It's unbelievable. but. I don't have enough time tonight to go through it. We will dig deep into quantitative easing and how that works. By the way, quantitative easing is basically the government going out and buying up the T-bills, T-bonds, the mortgages. Uh, and the mortgages for the last several years, they have bought up a huge amount. The, the balance sheet for the Federal Reserve is like $30 billion. In other words, that's how much they owe. Uh, 10, 12 billion, uh, not billion, I'm sorry, trillion, I'm sorry. $30 trillion, about 10 to $12 trillion of that is mortgages that they bought from Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase Manhattan, all these lenders. They bought those mortgages up. Uh, remember, in 2008, that was the big thing. Banks were packaging shitbag mortgages, pardon my French, but that's what they were, people who could fog a mirror, and they were selling them off to other investors all around the world within their own portfolios to retirement funds, stuff like that. Government banned all that, but here comes the government as the Fed coming and buy those same mortgages. Now the mortgages are a lot higher quality. There's no indication that the mortgages are gonna go south at this point in time. But the bottom line is one hand of the government prints the money, gives it to the other one, they buy the mortgages, they free up Bank of America, go loan more, go loan more, go loan more. And now what happens is, uh, you know, at some point the fit hits the shan and someone has to stay after school for detention. And it's gonna be us the consumers in the U.S. because that balance sheet has to be reduced. And so now instead of quantitative easing, there's what's called quantitative tightening. So they have all these mortgages. They're letting them expire. They're selling them off to somebody else. Uh, that debt is going to be paid down, but at a reduced rate. And it's just future generations are going to pay for it. We're going to pay for it in the short term with higher taxes. It's going to be paid for in the longer term with even higher taxes. So anyway, that's my rant and rave for today, for this week. Uh, Tuesday, though, we'll really get into some stuff that will piss you off. Uh, so sorry about, you know, the amplitude here, actually. <laughs> but I'm passionate okay. about this stuff. It's, a, in my opinion, <laughs> it is a total waste of, uh, you know, government money, our money, uh, you know, at the behest of several organizations. And so we're, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll pull down the curtain and we'll see what the wizard's doing how they're making the sausage, et cetera. We'll go through all that next week on next week's calls.